Hey guys, I'm Jose and welcome to this new series of tutorials in Grasshopper. So, well, um, I hope that you know what Grasshopper is. If you don't, well, it's a plugin for Rhino. Uh, you can download it for free from the website. Here's the website. Um, there's al already a lot of tutorials here. You can see videos and a lot of documentation. Uh, really good stuff. Um, and the reason for doing these tutorials is mainly that I thought in a way that um, it was still missing kind of a comprehensive uh, course that would start from the beginning to get you to some advanced level. Um, that's something that I've been doing already in the Bartlett um, and I always want to just whatever class I'm doing in any university to just put it online as well. So to as a documentation for students but also for anybody online. Um, so we're gonna start doing that um, and maybe some of the content you will find online is repeated but I, I guess I'll try to just take you from the very beginning to just to some advanced level, right? So let's go ahead. Um, so Grasshopper is this window here. You can call it by typing Grasshopper. Obviously you need it to have it installed first. So check how to do that on the website. Um, and it's very straightforward. It's basically a, a graph editor. It's like a um, graphical scripting language, right? So you'll be able to do thing, things that you can do with scripting but in a graphical manner by connecting nodes. So we'll see that in a minute. Uh, but it, let's explain a little bit what Grasshopper can basically do, right? So if we... I'm gonna draw a line here. Turn on control points and move them vertical. And just to produce something, I'm gonna do a piece of geometry. Let's say these two pieces, what if we loved them, right? Uh, so the loft you can see here uh, it's an operation that connects two curves, but if we try to move the curve again, you see that the curve is not connected to the geometry, right? Um, so that's something that we call, let's say, the the history of the of the object and the construction, right? So let's remove that and let's try to repeat that operation by pressing this button here, record history, right? So if we press record history and we type loft now, uh, we will get the same operation, but this time notice how record history it's uh, turned off instantly. Um, you can see that now the geometry is linked to the objects, right? So we basically created a dependency between this object and the curve uh, and wherever we move these curves now the geometry will follow. So that's basically the whole idea of Grasshopper. So, um, and David Ratman that created it um, originally was called explicit history or something like that um, and the idea was that how can we actually start visualizing that network that is established between these two lines, right? that creates this piece of geometry. So let's see how to do that uh, in Grasshopper and that will end up our little introduction to it and then we'll start jumping into more advanced topics, right? So let's bring in the Grasshopper window and you'll see that one of the things that Grasshopper really takes care of is like the beauty and the detail of these icons. It's something quite nice. So you can have like, uh, you have lots of tabs here um, for different purposes and the first one we'll see is this one, how to load some geometry that is linked to the screen in Rhino, right? Something that we have built, like these lines, uh, into Grasshopper. So if we go into geometry here in the parameters tab, we can just load something like curve, right? So I'm gonna just click and drag it into the canvas here and I can move here in the canvas by pressing right click, just panning, or with the zooming in and out with the uh, mouse wheel. So that's a way of just navigating. Uh, and you will notice that this kind of little node, it's orange, right? That means that it's a warning, there's an error. Uh, not an error as such, because an error will be shown red, but a warning saying that um, there is no information inside, right? So we need to link this, inf uh, this node to some information here in Rhino. So to do that, we're just going to right click and go and set one curve. We could set multiple curves as well, but we, in this time we just set one. And notice how like Grasshopper window disappears, and I can just go in here and 
select one curve, right? So you see that it turns, it becomes red. That means that it's linked to Grasshopper. And if I click on it, it will become green. So unselected red, selected green. So you see that there's a representation of that curve inside our Grasshopper network. Let's go ahead and create another one. I'm going to just copy paste this one by pressing Control C and Control V, right? The quickest way to just copy this object. And in this case, both will be the same curve. So I'm going to overwrite this one by pressing again set one curve. And I'm going to press on the other curve, right? So you see that I have just basically created, uh, linked these two nodes to the curves to the actual curves on screen. So let's see how we can actually do the surface loft that we've done before in Grasshopper, right? So we could look into surface, let's say, um, and, and create it. And there must be a way of doing a loft, right? So maybe here, yeah, loft, right? So that's great. And we can see that loft is a node that has several different inputs and outputs, right? Everything works in Grasshopper with this idea of inputs and outputs, right? So something, two curves in this case, could just bring and produce a surface that it's a loft. So if we just kind of uh, put our mouse on top of some of these inputs, we will see that it's asking us for section curves, a uh, series of curves. So this is kind of, this is already kind of a little bit complex in the sense that it it's more than one curve. How do we put these two curves together, right? And there's some options for the lofting. And we won't care about that for now. So let's see how to connect this stuff. We just drag left click and we can connect this curve for the loft. But the problem is that if we want to connect these two, we can't do that, right? Um, it only allows us for one connection. So we need to find a way of connecting these two things, right? So there's a few things of a few ways of doing that. Let's say one of them is pressing shift and that means that we will add the connection. So that works, right? Only by pressing shift we can just add two nodes into one input. Um, but there's also something called merge, right? So I could just another way of looking through this stuff like these nodes here or this kind of operations, it's double clicking in the canvas and I could look for merge, right? And merge is a node that allows us to say connect one node and a second one and it just automatically merges the operation, right? So uh, we just saw two ways of uh, basically putting these two curves as the input of a loft operation and basically great, getting the same thing. Still, we still have the control over this geometry, right? So we can go in here, move things around, and you'll see that this is what it's called kind of a parametric network, right? That you are basically establishing the relationships between the geometry and then you just alter some of the geometry and everything gets updated because it's just uh, procedurally defined in that way, right? Um, so that's it for this first intro. Uh, I hope that you understand a little bit the interface. The next, uh, um, in the next tutorial, we're going to start talking a little bit about how does Grasshopper understands data and starts manipulating data to actually get different results.